welcoming you to a musical encounter from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on the School District of Philadelphia Network. This is the first time a young musician has also been invited to host an encounter program, so I'm really very excited. I wonder if you know that this series can be seen on television and in elementary classrooms all over the country. So in a way, we all become teachers. You're here with your questions, and I'm ready with hopefully interesting answers and exciting performances. You've just heard me perform the third movement of the Sonatina by the American composer Eldon Burton, assisted at the piano by my friend and fellow student at the Curtis Institute, Grace Chung. The best way to really get acquainted with my favorite instrument is to pay attention to the technical demands and the wonderful sounds of the flute. So listen carefully as Grace and I perform part of the first movement of the concerto by the French composer Jacques Hibert.
it's your turn to perform. So come to the microphone, and I'll try to answer all your questions. Why do you play the flute sideways? Well, originally, the ancestors of the modern flute were recorders. And they were played vertically, from the mouth down. But then came the invention of transverse, or sideways flutes. And originally, they were in wood, and not until the, um, more recently were there metal flutes, silver, gold, and sometimes platinum. How many years have you been playing the flute? This is my eighth year. I started studying flute when I was six, and now I'm 14. Do you know who first made the flute? Yes, flutes are very ancient instruments, starting with a piece of wood with holes in it that one blows into. And then once the recorder evolved into the transverse or sideways held flute, um, there's one person, Theobald Bim, who was instrumental in figuring out where to place all the holes and finding out the ratios between the notes. And that led to the modern day flute, okay. which we play now. Okay. Does it matter if the flute is larger or smaller as in sound? Well, there's really one standard size flute, um, which is the one I play. And when I started, since I was smaller and my fingers were smaller, I um, played a closed hole flute. Uh, maybe if you can see my flute, there are holes in the keys. And in a professional flute, that's so that people can feel the vibrations of the air. And until I grew into the open hole, I used closed. But it was the same size that I played. How many keys does a flute have? I better count. <laughs> well, pretty much um, one for every finger, and then other ones. Because sometimes a key will press two, one finger will press two keys to get um, accidental, such as a note sharp or flat. If you play a woodwind instrument, does it make it easier to play another woodwind instrument? Well, that's a good question because, of course, all woodwind instruments involve lots of air. So there's a very fundamental way of breathing. I breathe from the diaphragm, which is down here, and I fill my lungs and play with a very open throat. And that's what you have to do for every woodwind instrument. But the way I hold my mouth, or the embouchure, is different for the flute. Why don't you watch how I breathe and then produce a sound? And something about the flute, which is different from other in woodwind instruments, is that vibrato is very important. Vibrato is when there's a vibration added to the steady column of air, which is filling my flute. And that's used for expression. What are the different parts of the flute? The flute is in three parts. This is the top one, the head joint, where most of the sound comes from. And this is the lip plate and the embouchure hole. The way I hold my mouth is also the embouchure. The rest of the flute is the body. And this is the foot joint. And that's where all the mechanism is to get the notes. How do you make the different sounds on the flute? Mm -hmm. um, it's very important to blow and have air, because that's the main, the main thing that makes the tube of the flute resonate. And the pitches are determined by the fingers. But as far as different sounds on the flute, there are so many different colors and tone colors. Um, because the flute is the closest instrument to the human voice. And sometimes in my music, I see cantabile, which means in singing style in Italian. And I often have to emulate that style. affects the mood or emotion of the piece. I play a trumpet. Do you have to buzz your lips to make the notes come out? No, I don't buzz my lips, actually. It's just, um, the embouchure is just, it's firm so that the air can just go right out. And I don't know how it is on trumpet, but for flute, when you tongue, there's very particular strokes, such as double tonguing. The stroke that I say is ta 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 how can you do all the notes with one breath? Well, I practice holding my breath for as long as I can.
Now that you know more about the technical aspects of the flute and how the sounds are made, let's talk about the repertoire and different ways that the flute can appear in performance. Have you ever heard a flute before this encounter? Maybe it was as a member of the symphony orchestra. Have you ever heard this? Wolf? You're right. That's wonderful. And maybe you know that in Peter and the Wolf, the flute is the bird. The flute is also the bird in Sanson's Carnival of the Animals. There are many wonderful solos for flute in orchestra pieces such as in Debussy's Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. In this piece, the story is of the fawn, or mythical satyr, who falls in love with a nymph and chases her through the forest. It starts with flute solo, The Calm Afternoon. <laughs> 